What is up, everybody? This is Zero Gravity, Apollo Media's NBA podcast, presented by Zing Zang's Blaze and Bloody Mary Mix, as well as The Celebrity Mint. I'm here with the What We Learn Houston Rockets King, Josh Garcia. What are we doing, buddy? Howdy, y'all. Uh, I'm blessed, first of all. Uh, Thanksgiving Day leftovers. We're on day three now. Uh, enjoying it. Uh, just saw the Devin Booker game winner. Feeling really good about myself. Uh, I know you're not feeling too hot about your Knicks, but it's a good time for everybody. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Everything's fine. Um, never want to see the Suns win, and I never want to see my Knicks lose. So, uh, bad combination tonight. At least the Knicks look, look good while they're doing it. I, yeah. I really like the New Jerseys that they got going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jalen Brunson is just different, too. That's you know a conversation for another day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're recording this Sunday, November 26th. And it's almost 9 p.m. now, Central God's time zone. That's right. So games are ending. Uh, we did watch a giant comeback from the Bucks today. I think it was 31 points, 27 points. I can't remember what it was. But they came back from the Portland Trail, Trailblazers and Dame's first game against his uh, former team. A lot of good basketballs happened. We haven't recorded in a week now Yeah. at yeah. Thanksgiving, like you said. A lot of the leftovers, a lot of stuffing. Uh, a lot of turkey. Had a great time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a great Thanksgiving. Um, NBA in-season tournament has created lots of chaos. Oh, yeah. But outside of that type of chaos, uh, there's a new type of chaos in the NBA that we're not really used to. Josh Giddy. Um, if you haven't heard about the Josh Giddy situation, just Google it or go to Twitter. You will find lots of memes, TikToks, um, and also some news. All of this is alleged, obviously, but uh, Josh Giddy allegedly uh, had sexual relations with a minor, I guess is what you would say, under 18. Um, something you shouldn't do Yep. <laughs> when you're over the age of 18 or 19 in some states. Not great. Not great when you're an NBA player for the Oklahoma City Thunder, who is an upcoming young NBA team, not great. Um, my problem with the NBA in this situation is is that Josh Giddy is just being fed to the wolves with reporters and press conferences just being thrown in front of cameras, in front of microphones. Terrible PR on OKC's part. As well as, uh, hey, NBA, why are we not like just telling them to sit out the games? Like, hey, why don't you go home for a week? Yeah, it, it, until we, we figure out this there. investigation thing. Yeah, it, it, that, that's been the strangest part of all this is that, like you said, they're just throwing them out into the wolves, and I don't, I don't think that this is normal. I mean, we've seen a couple uh, DV cases and you know alleged you know wrongdoings by players in the past, but I can't really remember a time where the immediate day after he's just at the facility, just taking questions. I mean, well, not taking questions, hearing questions out and. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And No. Yeah. I, I think the news kind of dropped Friday night after the game. Um, started coming out on Twitter and TikTok and all the social medias. I woke up probably at 5-something in the morning on Saturday morning. Dog woke up, needed to go to the bathroom. So, obviously, I'm waking up and check Twitter, see what's going on. I did not expect that to be what I <laughs> saw in the group chats, as well as my entire feed was just Josh Giddy. And it was all memes, so I was very confused. Like I didn't understand. And it was the uh, it's the TikTok video that someone created of the show you. I don't I don't know. It's the girl, and it's like, oh, everyone wants to. We're in the first five minutes of this, so this isn't going to go for YouTube. I can't say it yet, but everyone wants to get with the fifteen year old. And then it's just Josh Giddy highlights. I was like, oh, that's not good. That that can't be good. That's a, that's a perfect way for that to be. Uh... To, for that to be breaking news to you, like uh, honestly, at like five thirty in the morning, <laughs> I think I was awake when it broke too, and I was just seeing like very. I mean, we'll, we will still say alleged, but I was seeing a lot of proof, or at least social media proof, and it really, it really threw me for a loop like that early in the morning. It's uh, fairly damning, very much so. <laughs> All, all of the things that are out there, fairly damning. Um, not great if you're Josh Giddy. My problem with the NBA is is that this is much more serious than John Morant holding up a gun on Instagram Live. Sure, John Morant uh, probably is supposed to be the face of the league here in a few years, and that's what the NBA was probably prepping for. Um, 
not what you want to see out of the future of the face of the league, you know, holding up a gun on Instagram Live. But he wasn't on Memphis Grizzly or NBA property. So technically not against the rules. I get why you hold him to a higher standard, but 25 games is a bit ridiculous. But nevertheless, yeah. it, it happened in eight hours, 10 hours. Like he is going to step away from the team. He is going to rehab, like to talk about gun stuff. Like they did all of these things within 12 hours of this Instagram live happening. Kyrie Irving uh, tweets out a stupid tweet uh, to a link that is incredibly anti-Semitic and I get like why he got suspended. You can't tweet that if you're a public figure and also one of the faces of the league, you've won a championship with LeBron. Like you're a very polarizing individual, especially after all of uh, any of the other 27 things that were a problem over the last five years with Kyrie Irving. So I get that one entirely as well also happened within 10 hours of the tweet maybe even sooner it might have been five hours and they're like hey Kyrie you're gonna have to step away oh by the way here's five games you're suspended Josh Giddy, nothing went a much more serious thing exactly I get that the Kyrie thing and the jaw thing were not good things but Josh Giddy's thing is actually serious and uh potentially a felony seems like that could be a problem I, I get that the NBA doesn't have a rule book for things like this, or maybe they do, but I mean, something has to happen. Something has to happen. I mean, you have to act swiftly in things like this. I mean, you can't just, you can't just play in a game. There. He literally played in the game yesterday. <laughs> yep. Yep. And uh, I, bet I, I, don't know, I don't know if y'all saw, but it was uh, a halftime report from the OKC Twitter account. And it said, uh, see you in 15. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you can do your research into the Josh Giddy situation, but yeah, very bad timing. <laughs> maybe intentional, maybe mm. not. I, I, don't I don't know. I can't tell if they're trolling or not. The, yeah. the admins they have a little too much freedom now. I don't like that. I don't like that. But nevertheless, just wanted to get that out of the way. I know we spent the first few minutes of the podcast on that, but if you're in the NBA world, you know what's happening. You need you know that. Uh, yeah, probably shouldn't be happening. We're right there with you guys. Yep. Lock, lock and step. So let's talk about some rookies. We, we talked about Chet the other day, last week, week before, whenever it was. We talked about Chet Holmgren and how good of a basketball player he is. He's 21 years old, technically a rookie because he missed his real rookie season. Let's talk about some other rookies. Um, do we want to talk about the one in like South Texas or do we want to talk about the one in Central Texas. I think the floor is yours with uh, your Dallas man. Uh, why, don't, mm-hmm. why don't you go ahead? All right. We'll, we'll talk about Derek Lively the second. Um, he's amazing. I love him dearly. I just want to give him a hug. Just stash him in my pocket, you know, play with his curls. He's got great hair, you know. Yeah. It flops in the yeah. wind. It's not like a fro that just kind of sits there. He's got the the curls that will bounce when he's running and everything. Ah. Oh. Majestic. Derek Lively. Um, the Mavericks are 0 and 2 without Derek Lively playing basketball. And arguably those are the two worst games of the season for the Dallas Mavericks. It was against the Los Angeles Clippers the other night. And earlier in the season against the Toronto Raptors, they got absolutely mauled from start to finish without Derek Lively. Derek Lively is the key to unlocking a lot of things with the Dallas Mavericks. And without him, they become bad at basketball. Which is weird when you have Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. Like, you think you could just get away with it without playing defense. You're like, oh, they'll just score all of the points. But when Luka pretty much, like, breaks his thumb, doesn't break his thumb. Actually, it's not Luka's fault. I'm blaming James Harden. This is James Harden's fault. James Harden broke I'm right there with you, brother. Um, This is your fault, James Harden, yep. coming after you. Um, But Derek Lively, I mean, he's only averaging, like, 8-8. Eight and eight. Eight and nine, something like that. But there's something about him on the floor that just creates so much confidence in the rest of the team because they know he's going to be able to defend the paint as well as rebound and rim run and set screens for Luca. They already have a great chemistry. It's the wildest thing. Like Luca hasn't had this kind of chemistry with anyone other than Dwight Powell, longest Man. tenured Dallas Maverick Man. since Dirk Nowitzki left. Um, yeah, we don't have to talk about Dwight Powell, but they're lively. Great rookie. He's going to make an all rookie team. He's it's probably gonna be the second one because they're gonna put Chet and Wimby on the first one, even though right. Wimby might not deserve it. And we'll get 
we'll get to you, Wemby. We'll get to you, sir. Yep. Yep. I mean, I will say that the the being a plus minus king and maybe not filling up the stat sheet, but making people like around you better. I mean, there's another center in uh, Southeast Texas that I'm sure you're you're well aware of who can do everything on the plus minus front along with getting you 20 and 10 a game. But this is rookie talk. We'll 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 leave that for another day as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just good to see, good to see right players now. like that, yeah. If you want to hear about Shingun, though, go check out the Summit State of Mind, also on our YouTube channel, Apollo HOU. Um, Kenny and Justin, they got the lowdown on all the Rocket stuff. They got two episodes a week, and they talk a lot about Alperin Shingun because he is good at basketball. That's so right. go check them out, Summit State of Mind. Um, yeah, so the Dallas Mavericks, without Derek Lively, they are bad, and with Derek Lively, they are good. I don't know. That's, it's not, it's not that's about it. Anymore. For sure. No. Very strange. Uh, let's go to the other Texas team. Not Houston. San Antonio. Victor Wembanyama. I don't like you. I don't like you anymore. I don't I don't think I really did ever like you, but I was indifferent. Now I don't like you. I, I didn't like you immediately when you put your head down and you started laughing at your friend or a family member when our uh, our lottery, lottery uh, pick went away for the Houston Rockets. I mean, it was very clear that you didn't like us from the start, so I don't have to like you, you know? No, no, absolutely not. I understand why you didn't like him off the bat. Um, I was intrigued. I was like, all right, let's see what the big guy's got. Seven foot six, seven foot five, whatever he is, can shoot. He's got a great handle. How's he going to – he looks like an alien or just an awkward giraffe, baby giraffe. I don't know what you call him when he runs down the court. But his wingspan just being nine feet long and oh everything about him is just so interesting that I was excited to watch him play basketball. Now that I've watched him play basketball a lot, yeah, he's going to do some things that you've never seen before. Other than that, like, all right. You know, the problem I have with Victor Wimanyama is that his name was spelled wrong on his jersey the other night, Friday night, Saturday night, whenever it was. He basically, the direct quote was basically, I don't know if someone got fired, but I'm a little upset. Some that was a paraphrase. Yeah. He's a little upset about his name being spelled wrong in his jersey. Yeah. This happens to every team. Like one well, player on well, every well, team well, at well, least well, a couple of here. times a season. Yep. Yep. Like this isn't new. Every time. I, I just I, I hate I hate using this word but the the, the, the privilege was just oozing out of him. I, I didn't I immediately didn't like that and Maybe he did get someone fired. We we wouldn't hear about it unless you know the the person who did got fired come out uh, came out and said something. But I don't, I don't like it. What what's the point? Things Just happen. That's life. Cut your name down to Wimby. There you go. It wouldn't happen as much. That's right. You have too many letters in your name. That's the issue, Victor. Too many letters in your last name. So it's too hard to actually fit because it literally just goes all the way like all the way around his jersey. Yep. It's a rainbow. It's Ah, the, the, why do the, you want someone fired for misspelling your name, dude? It's not that big of a deal. You still got paid your game check. Yep. You got to play basketball for a living. But you have to live in San Antonio, so I, I get why you're a little upset. Yeah. The, the the River Rock is cool if you're if you're drunk enough, for sure. I'm sure once he turns 21, he'll have a great time over there. He's taller than the Alamo. I mean, what do you got to do in San Antonio? Exactly, exactly. Churros. He hadn't tried churros yet, probably. But, yeah, wanting someone fired for misspelling your name on a jersey, that happens to every team. A couple players, maybe one player, multiple times a season. I don't get that. And then his face when they lost that game that night, when they were walking off the court, just utter despair. Just the longing, the long look on his face. He was just like, I, I just miss winning. Well, buddy, you might not get to. Welcome you to might not buddy. get to. You yep. chose the wrong organization. You rigged it for the wrong organization. You could have been in Houston. You could be winning basketball games right now. Yep. Ime Yodoka would probably be yelling at you every day, but like, you could be winning. It builds character, after all. It would be nice. I mean, just, just, just calling um, for someone, even, even passive aggressively calling for someone to be fired, that immediately vibes, vibes are low. I don't like it. It's gross. I don't like it. It's weird. The fr- I never. I never really liked the French anyway. <laughs> they were mean to me when I was in Paris. Studied oh. abroad. Went for like four days. Check out Paris. Everyone was mean. 
Wow. No one would give me directions. I was very nice. I understand that I'm American and I didn't know your language. I studied Span- Spanish, not French. Sorry, I was going for the useful language around here. That's right. Um, Texas on yeah. top. Yeah. What? French. We're going to get canceled for that. Um, <laughs> Asar Thompson has been maybe not the steal of the draft, but the surprise of the top five picks of the draft, yeah. maybe. The player, I don't know what you say. the player immediately playing up to to his uh, potential the quickest, I think. Yeah. So he's averaging 11.1 points per game. Not a ton. This is all off of basketball reference earlier today. So if they played today, then it might be a little different. But 9.8 rebounds and 3.2 assists. Um, good. Yeah. The man moves. Me. It's cool. He's good at basketball. Yeah. yeah he's uh, much like his brother. Freak athletic. Can pass the ball. Plays good defense. Kind of a bully, if you will. Um, hard worker. Great motor, as a, a scout would say. Uh, 9.8 rebounds is the thing that sticks out to me. Like Luca does this, but it Luca's built like an offensive lineman essentially. Um, and six foot seven kind of makes sense that he can get rebounds and he's also the best player on the team. So people might clear out for him to get more stats. Right. Sure. The Detroit Pistons have 47 power forwards on the team. How is Asar Thompson averaging 9.8 rebounds a game? I, I could cope and be like, oh, he's he's in the right spots. Everything's going well for him. But from what I have seen this past season, and like I mentioned on the last step, uh, I've actually watched like two or three full Detroit Pistons games damn near this season, and he just moved. I don't, I don't know how you've done that. I, man, I love ball in the worst way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the worst way. But no, just the way he moves, I, I like it a lot. He has the, this crazy motor. It's almost like you mentioned, like a college scout, you know, when they see some uh, some scrappy D two lineman out of JUCO or something, like this guy's got a high motor. He can move. He's fun, and I think every rookie or young player should kind of try and bring on to that level as much as they can because that is what sticks with these NBA coaches. That's what gives you playing time. That's what brought him into the league in the first place. And at this moment, he might be the better Thompson twin. Who knows? Ten years down the line, he might. But. I really enjoy what like what I've seen out of him, and I think it'll stick for sure. I still think Ahmed has the yeah. highest ceiling, but in the moment, you know, the Detroit boy, he's just he's just different. He's different right now, and I like it a yeah. lot. I, I asked it in the group chat, in the Apollo NBA group chat the other week, did the Rockets draft the wrong Thompson brother? Because the Rockets went out and got Fred Van Vliet. They went out and got Dylan Brooks, two players that are not, players that you rebuild with necessarily. They are players that are going to win you enough games to keep you out of the top end of the lottery and also not really necessarily push you into the playoff conversation. They can help you. Uh, obviously, this is preseason when I'm thinking this. Now they're looking like players that were going to help you get into a playoff spot, if not just a play-in, but potentially an actual playoff spot, one through six. Okay. Um, when you look at that, and you look at Jabari Smith Jr., who's starting to heat up. Alperen Shingun's actually turning into a potential all-star this season. And Jalen Green, over the last two games, has been good at basketball and not bad. Seems like progress. Yeah. Seems like something you would want out of your favorite basketball team. If you just plug and played Osar Thompson with Tari Eason off of the bench, Oof. on that bench unit, yeah. they wouldn't score a lot of points, Deep. but they're not going to give up any points. man that team would be deep yeah, we can at least say this right now but i mean man, get him out of detroit come play with your twin give it a couple years things might happen yeah i like it. so a lot. i asked that in the group chat and everyone was like we haven't seen amen play and i i get that when i asked the question amen's been hurt i understand whatever i don't know it was just intriguing because osar thompson's been very good to start his career um 10 rebounds a game and 11 points. You know, that'll play. That's that'll a play. rookie. Come on. It's beautiful. Draymond Stafford. That'll right. play. Um, last rookie we want to talk about is Jaime Jaquez Jr. The Miami Heat, prototypical player. Just plays hard. Makes big shots. He's a little cocky. Um, he's got a Hispanic name, and he's in Miami. That just It all makes sense. It all makes far too much sense. He's averaging 11.2 points per Per game, 3.8 rebounds and 2.4 assists on the season, according to basketball reference. But before the show, you were looking at his stats. It's a little deflated. 
his uh, season averages because he's scored a lot of points recently. Yeah, he he, he played. He initially didn't. I mean, I'm not gonna say he played terrible, but I mean, with 15, 20 minutes a game, he was getting four points, six points, eight points. You know, these past couple of weeks, he's been giving you a consistent 13 to 17 a game with a couple 20, 22, 23s in there. That's that's huge. And especially with all the injuries that they've dealt with this year. And Lord knows, I hate the Miami Heat, but I mean, they've got some dogs. They got some dogs. And seeing, you know, an experienced college player, which I felt I've saw way too long. He was almost uh, the Bo Nix equivalent to, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, he was the Bo Nix comp. Uh, he, he was in there way too long. I was screaming, get a job at you, but now he's yeah. getting a job and he's might compete for these next couple of years. And the heat organization has just been great for him. And I think uh, it'll definitely help wherever, whatever he does for the rest of his career. I think uh, this is a great landing spot for him right now. And he's just, he's doing what he can. It's, it's great. It's really fun to see those, uh, those percentages are great too. He's a uh, 50, 40, yeah. 82, which is really good. Very, very good. Very efficient. Yeah, and we we make fun of the heat with the heat culture thing and all that kind of stuff. It just continues to work though, and that's the issue. Not like we can make fun of it all we want, and then all of a sudden the Miami Heat are in the Eastern Conference Finals again. You're like, how does it keep happening? Nope. Nope. There is culture is important. It, it is continuing to work. Jaime Hawkins Jr. has been very fun to watch when he gets to play, and now he's getting to play a little bit more consistently. Trade right. Tyler Hero, open up more minutes for Hawkins. I don't know. We're just spitballing here. <laughs> I love that idea. Put Tyler here on the Utah Jazz. He's getting you 35 a night. No way fans are both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we're cooking. Most, Im- right. most improved player of the year, Tyler Hero. Yep. Um, off the top of the show, I said this, sponsor- this uh, episode is sponsored by Zing Zang. Zing Zang's Blazing Bloody Mary mix is an incredible mix. You can get it pre-made with the vodka, already infused, bacon-flavored infused, as well as just the mix. You can add your own vodka to it. It's get it's cold outside, boys and girls. It's it's cold outside now. Bloody Mary, Saturday morning. College football's almost over, but you can do it on Sundays. Hit your brunch. Brunch time before the NFL gets cooking on Sundays, or you can do it for a nightcap. Get your blazing Bloody Mary mix from Zing Zang. This is blazing hot takes. Watch the throne. This is your idea. So watch the throne. Uh, we're gonna call this which team can make a decent run into the playoffs. That hasn't done so recently. And by a decent run, we mean, like, can they get to a game six or seven of round one, potentially round two, advancing that way? Josh, you you had a team that you had mentioned before the show. I have fallen in love with the Orlando Magic these past couple weeks. And I know they uh, blew out our Rockets uh, day one, week one of the season. But uh, the way they've been playing recently, I mean, you almost have – Probably the most one of the most underrated guards in the league, if not the East, Cole Anthony. I mean, Franz Wagner, he's figuring it out. These players are so young, and I'm been, I've, I've just been seeing this almost thunder esque core come from the East, and they're not getting half or even a quarter of the coverage that they should be getting. They just beat the number one seeded Celtics the other night. I mean, this is real deal. We're we're well over 14, 15 games in the season. Like this isn't a fluke anymore. This this isn't some three and zero start to the season against crappy teams. Like they have the resume, they're building it even more. And who knows by the all-star break of the trade deadline, they could have 25, 32 wins on their, under their belt. I mean, this could be a real deal, serious team. And I've, I've just seeing, you know, outside of, like I mentioned, us getting blown out that first, that first game. I mean, from what I have seen on league pass, I mean, they just play with such continuity and I love that, especially in the East, which is a conference, as we mentioned before, I don't really, I'm not very fond of. I can look at the Orlando Magic and say, I'm always rooting for you. It's a fun squad and they're deep. They're very enjoyable. Suggs is balding, but figuring it out that that's regardless, but not not here nor there, but I'm really glad to see this team succeed. I mean, that 2008 finals run they made with Dwight Howard or 2009, excuse me. Um, that was one of the first NBA finals that I watched in full. It wasn't the greatest finals, but I always have a soft spot for them. And I think the Orlando Magic are just very enjoyable this season. And it's been probably 10 years. I mean, they did have the the end of a prime Terrence Ross, which is really fun. But <laughs> that's about it. Sure. That's about it. Bowl, bowl. Yeah. Bow Bamba. Yeah. Something to look forward okay. to. I like it a lot. 
Yeah, no, the, the Magic have been fun. Imagine losing to the Magic in the first week of the season. Couldn't be my favorite team. That's right. Um, That's right. But no, the Magic are really good. Paolo has been a little subpar to begin the season. I think uh, everyone expected him to take a huge leap and start averaging 22 to 25 points per game with like 7-7. Seven and seven. It's not the case so far. Uh, Franz Wagner has been the guy for the team. Everything runs through Paolo, but Franz has been... Hey, we need a bucket. Let's exactly. go get a bucket. It, it, uh, Franz that, has been very fun. That and then Paolo. Suggs, like you said. That Paolo, that? that Paolo game winner was just insane. I was, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that was his peak for, for his short career. And I'm telling you, this, this squad is just so fun. That, that That's all I had to add. Yeah, no, and Suggs has been much better this season, more towards what people had to – guessed what he was going to be like when he came into the league is uh he's starting to find that rhythm he's starting to find a place in this team and Paolo being good Franz being good helps um that you can rely on those two guys more so than anyone else same for Cole Anthony Cole Anthony was expected to be the guy score a bunch of points also conduct the offense doesn't have to he can come off the bench um run the second unit and just run it from there less pressure just play basketball, be good at basketball because you are good at basketball. Yeah, the Magic are very fun. I, I, They're number three in the East right now before tonight's games. They were number three in the East. Uh, yeah, they could absolutely take top six spot because Lord knows the Miami Heat, Atlanta Hawks, Brooklyn Nets, I, I don't know, the New York Knicks may, maybe not be a top six seed. Like a lot of these teams are going to be in the play-in. The Miami Heat and Atlanta Hawks last season were in the play-in. So, yeah, the Magic – they could just do things and wreak havoc because they're not a fun team to play against. Jonathan Isaac also plays really good defense. I don't care what else he does off the court or on offense, but he plays really good defense, and it fits that mold of what this team's trying to do. They play defense. They're awkwardly large, I think, for this game. That yeah, I'm, I'm used with to it. being played as a small ball. Um, they're awkwardly large. Like, yep. they're not huge, but... They're bigger at positions that aren't very big anymore. Exactly. So they're a fun team. Very unique. I can see it. Yep. I'm going to pick a Western Conference team as my surprise here. Plays in hot take. You may not see this coming. We made a lot of fun of this, this trade that happened earlier in the season. I'm going to take the Los Angeles Clippers oh. as a team that's probably going to be in the Western Conference Finals. Okay. For one reason and one reason only. They just played back-to-back games, Friday and Saturday. Saturday being against the Dallas Mavericks. They destroyed the Dallas Mavericks. I did not stay up to watch the Dallas Mavericks game because it started at 9.30 p.m. West Coast teams should not be allowed to have 7.30 p.m. games. Local. I love that idea. They shouldn't. NBA, let's fix that. Because the rest of the country where people actually watch the sport don't want to stay up till midnight watching their favorite team. Just doesn't want – I don't want to do it. I don't care. It's literally Satan's time zone. Yep. I hate the West Coast. Um, unless I'm on it. Then when I'm in the West Coast, I'm like, this is awesome, dude. You go to bed at like 10. All the games are over. This is sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Los Angeles Clippers are my surprise team. Is that really a surprise per se? No. They have all the talent. They've been to the Western Conference Finals beforehand. I don't know. That is like no one believed in them. James Harden is there. Russell Westbrook is there. Sure. The thing is, they played back-to-back games, and Paul George and Kawhi Leonard both played more than 35 minutes on Friday night. Then they played again on Saturday night. They both played. Neither of them sat. I love it. How long is that going to last? Maybe not. I I don't know. But the fact that they're playing back-to-back games means that they care, and they want to figure this out, and they want to win more games, and that is terrifying if you're an opposing team in the Western Conference. The fact that this even happened is just insane to me. Like... This is this is almost a once. This in hasn't a season. happened in four years. I was going to say this is at best a once in a season opportunity, and you're getting it within the first fifteen to twenty games of the year. This might be the year where something sticks, and this is this was uh, my surprise too. Uh, I had no idea what Stone was going to say here, but I I don't hate this. Jam- I don't like James Harden, but I don't hate this team. You know, always been a Westbrook guy throughout all the yeah. hate, all the issues. I have too. He's always. He was always my favorite player, yeah. and then he was on OKC. Yeah. Big part of my childhood. He was just 2016. Someone, um, 
made a TikTok of like the Natasha Bedingfield song. Maybe it wasn't Natasha Bedingfield, but it's just highlights of him in 2016 when he's just going off, hitting game winners, making huge plays, dunking on everybody. And then it starts to my toes. And oh, and that one, yeah. It's that song. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, this is this is just giving me so much joy. It was cute. Yeah. Where I'm just watching this little highlight, one minute TikTok of Russell Westbrook just dunking on people to whatever that girl's name is that sings that song. Yep. And I was like, this is delightful. This is what I miss in the NBA. It's just Russell Westbrook doing crazy things. Although Russell Westbrook was talking a lot of shit to uh, Luca the other night, and I didn't appreciate that very much. But, you know, nevertheless, I can see the Clippers being a finals team if they care this much and they don't get hurt. The problem is is that they have three superstars on their team that notoriously get hurt yeah. all of the time. And so and seeing them care so much this early just makes makes this feeling different. And I think it should stick if it's already happening now. I mean, imagine what this what this team's gonna be going through in March, April, May. I mean, this could stick. Everybody has to a lot of things have to go right, but this could really stick for them. And I'm I, I'm definitely with it. Yeah. I, I don't know. They just they gave me the warm and fuzzies this year. Um, this episode has been brought to you by Celebrity Mint. We'd like to thank Celebrity Mint as being a part of the Apollo family. They're a Houston-based family-owned company. They've got these awesome Ric Flair and Mike Tyson graded tokens and coins. So they come in gold and silver, and they're actually graded and checked out. So go check out CelebrityMint.com or at the Celebrity Mint on social media. Go check out these Ric Flair and Mike Tyson coins and tokens they're awesome so thank you celebrity mint for sponsoring this episode we've just talked some basketball sunday night we have more basketball on the way post thanksgiving so now we're about to start cooking and season tournaments been cooking but like and nba season really starts in december come christmas time it's nba time oh yeah oh yeah we're, we're just getting started I'm, I'm loving every minute of it we're only 16 games in the year and there's just so much to feel so much to talk about I'm I'm for it all. I love it. This is what this is what we do it for. I love this league. Yeah, we're, we're pumped. League pass every night. Uh, right. We'll be back on Thursday morning. So this has been Zero Gravity Apollo Media's NBA podcast, brought to you by Zing Zang's Blazing Bloody Mary mix, as well as the Celebrity Mint. Thank you for sponsoring this episode, and we'll catch you back Thursday. <laughs>